Welcome to the second part of my 25 part series on the GFX 50R that I'll use with different vintage lenses and also with the Canon tilt shift lenses. I'll be talking about four different adapters, uh, three manual adapters, and then the Viltrox EF GFX uh, AF adapter. Uh, you can use the timestamps below the video to navigate to the particular adapter you're interested in. On this channel, I focus on a few different types of cameras. I talk about the, a lot about the Fujifilm Instax cameras. I got the GFX 50R, and as I said, I'll be making a 25 uh, part series on this camera. And also I'm gonna be focusing a lot on the Canon gear, the EOS M mount, and also the R mount. In order to use different types of 35 millimeter lenses on the Fujifilm GFX 50R, we need to buy adapters so that we can connect the lenses to the camera. The first adapter that I have purchased is the KNF Concept EOS to GFX adapter. This is a dummy adapter, so it doesn't have any contacts for aperture or outer focus. So it will not work with any of the Canon lenses because all Canon modern EF lenses have uh, aperture controlled uh, electronically. But you can use this with uh, other manual lenses, for example, with the Petzval 85 millimeter lens that is made for the Canon EF mount. So you can line it up like this. And now you can attach this to the GFX camera. So let me show you what that looks like. So this combo works pretty well. I'll definitely make a video uh, about this. So if you're interested um, to see what this looks like uh, as far as image quality and my um, thoughts on the use, please consider subscribing. In general, I'm quite happy with this adapter. The build quality is pretty good. It's cheap, it only costs about $50. You can buy it on Amazon, also on eBay. But as I said, it doesn't transfer any electronic information. So you can use any of the Canon lenses. So I also have the tilt chip lenses, which are manual focus. So the autofocus is not a problem, but the apertures control automatically. So I can use this uh, tilt chip lens with this adapter, uh, unless I'm only willing to shoot uh, all wide open. Another good thing about the EOS EF adapter to GFX is that the EF mount is quite universal, it has a pretty short uh, flange distance at 44 millimeters. So you can use this adapter and then further adapt other adapters. So here I have a super cheap uh, uh, M42 to EF adapter. So I can just slap this on this adapter and I effectively turn the EOS EF to GFX to M42 to GFX. There are lots of cheap M42 vintage lenses on the market. Pentax used them in the 60s and I think 70s before they switched to the Biomed mount. And also a lot of the Eastern German um, lenses from the post World War II era use this mount. Since I didn't want to deal with uh, double adapters all the time and these adapters are pretty cheap, I did purchase a standalone M42 to GFX adapter. So this is uh, the Biotar uh, uh, 58 millimeter f2 lens which is uh, quite famous all the russian uh, helios lenses are essentially a copy of this lens so this is the west german original uh, they're usually more pricey than the helios lenses but uh, i like them a lot more they have this uh, nice silver finish and uh, it's just nice to have the original and you can get them especially here in switzerland for not too expensive i think i paid about 150 dollars for this one so this is just the M42 mount to GFX. The quality of the adapter is quite good. I'm not sure what material this is. I think it's brass, but uh, it seems to be machined uh, really nicely. And I haven't had really any problem with this adapter. Uh, so definitely worth a purchase if you are planning to use the M42 lenses uh, on a regular basis. Also, if your M42 lens doesn't line up perfectly after you screw it on, you can rotate this inner ring so it will line up perfectly on top. This part of the adapter is shiny. Uh, this part of the adapter is uh, matte black. Here is another M42 lens which you can uh, attach. So this is uh, like a really cheap uh, Tokina 135 f2.8. I looked at these lenses briefly and they seem to cover the GFX sensor pretty decently. And this should be a nice fun lens for portraits. I don't expect this lens to be clinically sharp, but it should uh, give us nice pleasing portraits. And it also has a built-in hood which is nice. And you can buy lenses like these for probably $30, $40. The last uh, fully manual adapter, also what they call dumb adapters they bought, is for the Olympus OM to GFX mount. Uh, this adapter has been a little bit of a disappointment. It fits nicely, but um, the springs inside the adapter are super tight and uh, it's really, really hard to take on and off the lens. So I'll show you what that looks like. The reason why I bought this adapter is because I was able to find a 50 millimeter Zuiko uh, F1.4. Uh, and this is one of the latest uh, serial numbers. So this is a serial number of 1.1 million. And these 50 millimeter lenses 
with the high serial numbers should be the best of these uh, OM50s. Um, so I'm curious to test this, how this looks like, but as I say, it's really, really hard to take it on and off. So to take off these lenses, uh, the release is actually on the lens and not on the adapter. So I push this and then I slide it off. I think I actually loosen it up a little bit, but I can see that it's rubbing a little bit too hard because I see some marks here on the adapter. I can see that it's actually too tight. Uh, this is brass, it's silver coated, and a little bit of the silver coating is actually rubbing off here. So essentially I'm planning to just attach this to the adapter and never take it off. These 50 millimeter Zuikos are pretty amazing. Look how tiny those are. So this is a 1.4. If you take a 1.4 from a modern a full frame a camera, uh, generally they're a lot bigger, like the 1.2s are enormous. Uh, much better optically, obviously, because this is a simple Gauss design. So these are the springs that I'm talking about. I think they're just a little bit too tight on this adapter. As I said, not a huge deal, but uh, it'd be better if they could fix that a little bit more of quality control. I've had a bunch of other ad adapters for the OM mount, and I haven't had a problem with the other one. Maybe So maybe it's just this particular adapter. The other ones might be fine. So to attach it back on, I line up the red dots and slide it. Yeah, so here it, I can tell it's really tight. There we go. And last, let's talk about the only AF adapter I have. So I bought the Voltrox EF to GFX adapter so I can adapt any Canon autofocus lens to the GFX. The reason why I bought the manual one at first and didn't go straight for the autofocus one is because the autofocus ones are super expensive. So the Voltrox is actually the cheapest and it's already uh, $250 and has very spotty reviews. So some people said it worked for a while and then it just stopped working. Some people said it never worked for them. So far, I've had this for about a couple weeks. It seems to work just fine. I'll show you some testing of uh, autofocus, but uh, people do seem to say it can die. Far subject is the indoor lighting. Uh, the light is not too bad here, it's natural light. You can see it focuses pretty quickly. On the close-up subject, it hunts a little bit, but it does manage to get a focus. These are pretty easy things to focus on. So it's a map, and then here we have some text. Uh, let's try to get a little bit less text, see if it has an easier time. Nope, not bad. Okay, so with this lens, it's pretty good. So let's take a picture here. Let's take a picture here to see if it's sharp. Good. Here I have the Canon 16 to 35 L 2.8 lens version two on the Voltrox EF to GFX adapter. I'm gonna focus on the far subjects. It hunts a little bit, but it does manage to get a focus. Now let's get a close up. A little bit more hunting, but it does manage to acquire focus pretty easily. So this is on, uh, this is at 35 millimeters. So let's take a picture here. Let's take a picture here. Let's go to 16 millimeters. You can see the dark corners here at 60 millimeters, which makes sense. I mean, this lens is for full frame, not for the GFX format. So let's see if it focuses still. So far focus, still pretty good. Close up focus, also pretty good. It hunts a little bit, but it does manage to get a focus. So let's take a picture here. Let's get a focus here. And here I have the 50 millimeter Canon EF uh, F1.4. So this is the old USM lens that was released in early 90s. I've had this lens for a long time. So let's go to 1.4 and let's see. Focus on the map is pretty good. I mean, there's definitely some hunting. Don't expect like Canon level out of focus, but it, the Voltrox adapter seems to work just fine. So I'm too close for this lens here. You can see it's not acquiring focus. Oh, there is it. Let's do far focus picture, not bad. So in general, let's try to stop down this lens, see if, how that looks like. So this is F4, F4, and then here we have close up at F4. Seems to work pretty well. So overall, the GFX adapter seems to work. So I'll use this for lots of different lenses that I have and I'll give you kind of like an overall assessment after six months of use and to see if it's still working. So the Voltra is the cheapest, then there's also a Tech Art, Fringer, Steel Ring, and like a Keepon uh, AF uh, adapters. 
but all those are pretty expensive. I think the, generally the price goes anywhere between four to six hundred dollars. So the road truck is by far the cheapest. So if it works, it's a good choice. I definitely wouldn't recommend using the GFX for the autofocus, especially if you're not using uh, native lenses. It's just better to uh, save yourself the trouble and just buy a Canon camera and use the, the Canon lenses on the GFX. I'm generally planning to use the Canon lenses only for landscape, so the autofocus is not super important. It's sometimes easy. I don't have to worry about uh, manually focusing all the time. And as I said, I mostly need it for the aperture control. So here is the GFX 50R with the 40 millimeter pancake. A lot of people think it's ridiculous to put such a cheap lens on such an expensive camera, but uh, the 40 millimeter pancake is actually uh, used by a lot of people on the GFX uh, cameras because it seems to have really good coverage, has a nice field of view about uh, 30 millimeters and it's a nice walk around landscape lens. And it's very sharp. I knew it was sharp when I was using it on my uh, 5D Mark II back in the day. Uh, I haven't really used it much because I've been using mostly um, cropped cameras for uh, Canon, but it's really nice to have. So it, this is like a nice walk around uh, combo. I even took this camera biking uh, and took some landscapes. So I'll show you some uh, examples of what that looks like. But the main reason why I spent the $250 on the Voltrox adapter is to use the tilt shift lenses. So let's see if those work. I didn't test the autofocus because there's no autofocus, but let's go with the 90 millimeter. So I, I bought the tilt shift lenses uh, many years ago. Uh, honestly, I haven't really used them that much. Uh, I should use them more. Uh, they're really fun to use. So let's rotate it back. There we go. So now we can see what it looks like. It's a pretty big combo, uh, but this should allow me to have a really nice creative control. The tilt shift lenses have a really big image circle, so they should have no problem with any vignetting on the GFX cameras, and you still have control of the tilt and shift. If you shift all the way, you probably see some vignetting uh, on the bigger sensor. I won't be using much shifting on this, uh, maybe just a little bit of tilt uh, for some uh, creative portraits. So as I said, I mostly need this for uh, aperture control. So let's uh, dial the aperture down a little bit. So this is f2.8. So if I take a picture, you can see the blades. Now let's scroll it down to like uh, f8. And let's take a picture. So here it's f8. And you can see that the aperture control works. What I found pretty annoying is uh, on the GFX cameras, the aperture blades seem to go uh, up and down based on when you look in the light. So you can see I'm going between light and dark. So this is when you walk around with the camera, it's constantly doing this. It's really annoying. For the uh, tilt chip lenses, it won't be a problem for me because I'm not gonna be walking around with this tilt chip lenses. Um, the photography I'm kind of aiming for uh, is to set up a tripod and really throw out my composition kind of akin of uh, shooting film. Uh, I don't really like to shoot film anymore because it's just so expensive. Uh, but the way to stop this uh, behavior is to uh, actually set the shutter speed manually. So the way I do it is I just rotate to T, so it's time. And then I have this uh, back controller to set the time, time. And now it doesn't do it anymore. So now I have an F8 and I can open it up nicely. So here's 2.8. And let's see, like this would be probably f4. Yep, that's f4. So when I will use the tilt shift cameras, I'll probably have it in this setup. So I have a aperture dial on here, and then I have a shutter speed dial on here. You can also obviously sh uh, switch it around. Uh, if you want aperture priority, you just go to um, the A here, but then it's gonna do the uh, weird uh, aperture closing and opening. I'm not a fan of this at all because it can also wear down the motors in the aperture blades. So I probably won't be using this very much. It does this with the, all uh, Canon lenses. So when you're walking around, it's probably good to put it in the T and then it's just uh, super fully manual, which is awesome. All right, let's try the 24 millimeter. Here I have the 24 millimeter L version tilt shift. So this is the second version, the better one. The first one is not nearly as good. As I said, uh, I had this lens for a long time. I haven't really used it for landscapes as much because um, I bought this around the time my kids were born. And once my kids were born, I didn't really have time to go on my own and take landscapes as much. Uh, so now um, that my kids are a little bit bigger, I'll have a little more time to do so. So you can still do the tilts and shifts, but as I said, mostly need the Wiltrix adapter to control the aperture. Manual focus is absolutely awesome on this lens. It's so, so smooth. All right, so let's look at the aperture blades. 
Uh, it's kind of hard to see on this camera. So I'm, I'm at 3.5, so it's fully open. The aperture blades are really deep in the lens. So I'm not sure if you're able to see it. So here's 3.5. And I can hear the aperture motor closing. I'm not sure if you can see on the video, but when I look into the lens, I can definitely see them closing. So the Viltrox adapter also seems to work with this uh, tail chip lens. So, so far, no complaints. The build quality of the Viltrox adapter is really good. I haven't had to update the firmware. I bought this in Switzerland, uh, as I said, uh, two weeks ago. So I haven't really checked what version of the firmware it is. Uh, some people say if you are having issues, uh, try to uh, update the adapter. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.